Hi friends, welcome to Tech Insights. This video is about a short review on Apple's Magic Keyboard and Apple's second generation pencil. After testing it over a month, I would conclude that it's a well-made keyboard case with a trackpad that finally lets you use the iPad as a kind of laptop. It's a well-made beautiful keyboard case that is nice to type and make lots of work on iPad much more convenient or at least familiar. Not to mention, it's very expensive. Although expensive, Apple's official accessories offered me ultimate convenience thanks to absence of manual Bluetooth connectivity. This magic keyboard is fairly thick, it's built heavily and the most unique design element is the floating screen. The iPad doesn't angle up from the back of the keyboard deck like your laptop. It floats a little. The whole action of opening it up and angling in its floating position is one of the smooth motion. You definitely need two hands to do it. One thing you can do one handed is pulling the iPad off the magic keyboard when it's open. You can tilt the screen from 90 degrees to 130 degrees which sounds fine on the paper but in practice 130 degrees is not nearly enough. You may feel discomfort especially if you are used to push the laptop screen back when it's on your lap. There is a type C port on the side of the hinge but it does only pass through charging, not for data transfer. That means if you plan to use an external display or USB hub with iPad, you are still stuck with plugging adapters on the side of the tablet. I observed that it seems to charge a little slower than just plugging directly into the Type-C port on the tab itself. But the best thing is, it's very comfort to have a cable back and out of the way if you are just charging. When I just sit back and on the couch and watch my stuff, the iPad Pro can just detach the Magic Keyboard as a tablet. I use it like a laptop when I'm sitting away from my desk and as a second computer for little things when my PC is overloaded. Accidental key presses are kept to minimum thanks to full-size keys and advocate spacing between them. There is just enough restroom for your palms to make the typing experience more comfortable. The most important part of any keyboard case is the keyboard. Apple calls this the magic keyboard. It uses the same scissor switch mechanism you will find on other magic keyboards for iMac and MacBook Pro. The keys are also blacklit. They can adjust automatically based on the ambient light conditions and they were exactly the right brightness most of the time. However, if you just want to turn them off, you can't. To fix that, I have a tip for you. To that, uh, go to iPad settings app, then dig into general, Choose keyboard and then go to hardware keyboard. There will be able to adjust the brightness using the slider. Anyhow, you can't find the difference here for that you need to be in dark. While you are there, I have another tip for you. 
as there is no escape key here you can remap one of your keys to escape you have five keys to remap and each one has seven options to opt as per your requirement The keyboard feels great but it lacks a function row. Trackpad is good, it's fairly small and there is zero lag on iPad OS. It lets you click anywhere on the trackpad not just in the middle or at the bottom. It's also smooth and accurate. Trackpad support on iPadOS is great. By the way, the cursor is a little dot most of the time, but it quickly changes to a traditional cursor when appropriate. It also expands out to become the size of UI elements like buttons or icons sort of snapping to them when you get close. At beginning that sound annoying to me, but I quickly came to love it. The cursor changes its color depending on the background you use to make you visible clearly. Beyond clicking, scrolling and highlighting text, you can use the trackpad for navigating the system. Use three fingers to swipe up to home and multitasking. Or left and right to switch between the recent apps. Now trackpad support on iPadOS and within Apple's apps is great. But trackpad support on bunch of third-party apps is absolutely not. Any app that doesn't use Apple's standard APIs for creating buttons or text feels off kitter with the trackpad. Google apps are particularly glitter here. Stuff you can swipe with your fingers cannot be swiped with the trackpad. And the cursor doesn't always do its neat shape-shifting tricks. In the beginning, I told it was somehow annoying to me. The only place where it feels a bit off is when you drag the cursor to the edge of the screen, you kind of drag beyond that edge to slide in various things like the dock, notification center, control center or your slide over apps. The magic keyboard turns the iPad into a great laptop that's a little heavier and thicker than you might expect. But to me, the whole point of iPad is that it isn't a laptop. While the Apple Pencil 2 features a somewhat no frill design, it's actually a huge improvement over the original. The matte plastic design is easier to grip than its glossy processor. Overall, it feels like a pencil in hand. Another plus is that rather than being completely round, Apple Pencil 2 has one flat side. That is not only great for grip, but also enables tap controls. There is no removable cap to lose. As users of Apple Pencil 1 will know, its tiny top is so far too easy to misplace. No such problem here. Apple Pencil 2 is single, clean, solid unit. One removable aspect we wish Apple could include in the box is extra tips. These were included in the original Apple Pencil and with the company bumping up the price for the second iteration, removing the replacement is what I was disappointed. The Apple Pencil 2 is well established as a fantastic tool for digital drawing and with regular iPadOS software updates, it keeps getting better. Response time is super fast and when drawing on laminated display of iPad Air and iPad Pro, it's almost like drawing directly onto a paper. And with drawing apps like Procreate offering countless brushes and customization tools, Apple Pencil 2 is suits to almost any drawing painting style. The additional tab functionality of flat edge of a pencil makes it even more compelling option for artists. Rather than moving to touch the display, users can simply tap on the pencil to swap between tools which makes an uninterrupted drawing experience. While the Apple Pencil is brilliant for drawing, that doesn't mean that non-artists shouldn't consider it. 
New iPad OS tool such as Crumble means it's great for handwriting too. There are plenty of note-taking apps available to take advantage of this. I also found it useful for photo editing apps such as Photoshop with the narrow tip of pencil offering much more accuracy than finger. With feature like Scrabble allowing you to write anywhere, you can input text across the whole iOS operating system. Perhaps the greatest improvement over the original Apple Pencil 2 is the way Apple Pencil 2 charges. Instead of awkwardly sticking out of the charging port, it simply snaps magnetically to the side of the iPad. Not only this keeps the Apple Pencil charged all the times, but it also makes it much more convenient to grab and use whenever the inspiration strikes. Having the pencil at hand at all times is incredibly useful. Battery life is officially 12 hours and I didn't get myself running out of battery after long drawing session. Keeping it snapped to the iPad between users means it likely to be well charged all the times. Cheaper third party Apple Pencil alternatives are available and many of them offer similar core experience. But if you want the beauty of Apple design and the extra features such as tap controls and magnetic charging, there is simply no other better option than Apple Pencil 2. The Magic Keyboard improves the iPad experience in only a handful of ways. It's an incredibly good, a bit expensive and heavy way to use your iPad Pro as a laptop. If that's what you want, this is a huge upgrade over what was available before and you will love it. The Apple Pencil 2 is the best stylus available for iPad and a vast improvement on the original. Magnetic charging, tap controls and clean design make it a compelling choice for designers. If you are a digital artist with cash to spare and if you have a right iPad, the answer is resoundingly yes. The Apple Pencil 2 makes a vast improvement on the original and for non-artists with tools such as Scrabble, it's a fantastic tool for handwriting and note taking. Any tasks such as photo editing, video editing will certainly benefit from stylus. That's all for the review. Meet you in the next video.